This is the introduction to the Songs of Innocence. And you notice that in this poem, the poem is about a piper who is piping down the woodlands, piping down the valleys, wild. And the poem describes the idea of, of, a, of a piper just enjoying himself and piping, and all of a sudden there's this, this, uh, this child that hears him piping and laughs at and likes his song and says, play that again like a child would do. You know, ch children frequently say, oh, what a great trick. Do that again, Daddy. Do that again. And the piper then does so. He pipes the song, and the child is delighted, and he says, now write it down so other children can hear it. And so the piper does. He writes it down for other children to hear. But notice how, how clever Br Blake is, because he says, in order for the piper to write down the song, what does he have to do? He has to take something from the, the world, something, a, a reed, and he has to kill this reed, basically. He, he, he plucks a hollow reed and takes that reed and dips it in black ink and puts black ink to white paper and thus changes the nature of the white paper. The white paper is innocent. And when he puts black ink to it, he gives a little bit of experience to the paper. Black ink experience to the paper. And it's the only way that he can pass on the song to other children. As the, the, the little the spirit or sprite or child who hears him sing says, do this so that other children can feel the joy of this song. And so he goes and he, he plucks the, the reed and he writes down the tune and he then stains the paper, uh, the paper and he says stains the water clear. So he takes the, 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 the ink and he stains the paper and then he stains the water as well and thus makes the pure water and the pure white paper darkened. Now we see in the plate that this, this sort of mixture of experience and innocence occurs too. And, and look at the plate behind me. What do you notice about the, the plate behind me? There's a, there's a picture of a piper and sheep, some, some kid floating above there. But uh, in this painting, you have three levels. You have the level of the sheep. They're all flocked together, doing the same thing, heads down, not paying attention to what's going on, totally trusting of the piper. Then you've got the realm of the piper, where he's, he's standing here with this pipe, the realm of man. And then you've got the realm of the divine, the, the, the character floating above, the child floating above. And the piper is turning over his shoulder, as though, as though looking up for inspiration. And both piper and child, notice, are done in an almost nude style of painting. Blake did this frequently. He had his characters dressed in very tight clothes in order to show, show the, the, the naturalness of their existence, but also almost otherworldliness. There's no time or place for Blake's paintings most of the time because his characters are not dressed in any one style. Notice in this plate also, you've got on this side and on this side two dark trees. Perhaps the same trees from that initial plate that we saw. The, the, the twisting nature of these trees, they almost curl around each other, tortured or, or almost uh, 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 as though they're, they're embracing one another. And the, and the trees reach up at the top almost like fingers. It's almost like these fingers reaching out to clutch. And what are they clutching? They're clutching at that floating child, that child that's innocent, as though the earth coming up through the trees, is trying to drag down that innocent floating cloud that the child is on. The child almost looks like he's floating on a pillow or a, uh, some sort of cloud behind him. But all around him, surrounding around him, is the darkness of the foliage, the darkness of the earth that threatens, again, to, to, to pull him down. Meanwhile, the piper is gaining inspiration from the, the child, but he himself almost has a, a, a not quite sure where he's going stance. The, uh, the one leg, the right leg, is behind the other, and it's almost like he's, uh, he's unsure of where he's going, looking over his shoulder for encouragement the entire time. And so in the poetry of innocence, we've got again the image of bright tinctured with the dark, and bright not sure of itself, and being trusting in others but also very vulnerable to the darkness that surrounds it and threatens to engulf it the entire time.